You've heard us reviewers talk about monitors' colour accuracy, the colour gamut coverage and delta ease plenty. Even things like sRGB, Adobe RGB and DCI-P3 colour spaces. But often we don't actually explain what all of that means. So give me a few minutes to run you through it. At a base level, your display is generally made up of red, green and blue subpixels. How much light each of those subpixels lets through determines what colour you perceive. It's an amazing trick we use to make our eyes see a whole range, literally millions of colours, without needing a way to produce well, more than three of them. Now, colour accuracy is pretty simple. It's how close your screen gets to displaying any given colour correctly. A very colour accurate display will display colours imperceptibly close to the actual colour you expect. Whereas an inaccurate display will show you colours that are wildly different from what you should be seeing. The way this is measured is with a value called delta E, but the lower the delta E, the more accurate the colour is. If you picture the whole visible light spectrum on a graph, you would get something like this, a chromaticity graph. If, you, if your monitor tries to display, say, this purple colour, but it ends up leaking a bit of green light, so you end up with more like this shade instead, well, that's not a very accurate rendition, and therefore would have a higher delta E value. Now, delta E is a actually remarkably complicated calculation, and there's actually been multiple versions of the figure. CIE, the International Commission on Illumination, an over century old organization, first offered delta E in 1976 as just the Euclidean distance formula. That had some problems, especially with saturation, and in short, it was revised twice, settling with this monstrosity. Delta E 2000, which is a, an absolute mess, but that's how you actually calculate delta E these days. So forgive me if I don't give you any actual numbers for my hypothetical examples. Still, the rule of thumb is that a delta E of less than two is what you're after for an accurate to the eye display. Now, ideally, a panel would just perfectly reproduce all colours, but of course the real world is far from the ideal world. So what about the, this whole colour space talk? Well, if we take a look at our visible light chart here, not all of this can be displayed by monitors. There is an almost infinite number of shades here that you could pick from, so the IEC, the International Electrotechnical Commission, yes, there's another one, standardized the sRGB color space that Microsoft and HP had been using since 1996 as the beautifully named IEC 61966-2-1 standard. Yeah, I'll be sticking with sRGB, it's a bit more catchy for me. Now, sRGB is one of the smallest colour spaces, but it is the standard for web content. It's obviously made up of red, green and blue values, although generally those values are represented as an 8-bit binary byte per colour channel. That's called 8 bits per channel, and means that you have 256 different values per colour for a total of around 16.77 million combinations. As an aside, you might have noticed the setting for limited dynamic range. That is when your graphics card will artificially clip the values to RGB 16 on the low end instead of down to RGB 0 or full black, and RGB 235 on the high end, so you know the lighter shades instead of 255. For most monitors, you want the full dynamic range setting, but some, especially older TVs, won't display RGB 0 or 255 or that sort of range right, so you need to set it to the limited range setting instead. So what about the other color spaces? Well, the Adobe RGB and DCI-P3 spaces are much wider, with Adobe RGB being based on all of the colours that a CMYK printer can output, since, as you'd expect, the sort of people who use Adobe software like Photoshop normally want to print their work, and it would be great if they could see what colour their work is going to be before they actually print it. 
DCI-P3 is from DCI, the Digital Cinema Initiative, which is what you hear more about in the video editing space and stretches more into the deeper reds and lighter greens compared to Adobe RGB's focus on exclusively more green. Often to be able to display more than the 16.77 million colors sRGB usually offers, you need to use more bits per channel. Most color focused displays offer 10 bits per channel, which means they have over a billion color combinations available to them. Quite an upgrade. So then how do you test for both the accuracy and color gamut coverage? Well, that starts with a way of accurately recording what colors your display is outputting. A device like this, the Datacolor Spider X, which is not sponsored by the way, this is just what I have available, has a six axis color sensor inside that acts a bit like a camera to capture how much red, green, and blue light is being emitted. Their test software then has the display show various colors to measure both the, the gamma coverage and in a separate test, the accuracy too. You might have also heard about color calibration. It's a very useful tool, but it is important to know that unless the profile is stored on the, the monitor, the, the scaler itself, like some LG models, it is your graphics card, your PC, that is applying the changes of that calibration to what you see. Basically, a tool like the Spider X records how off your display is with each of the colors and then saves a calibration file to your graphics card. That means when your graphics card goes to draw a new frame, it distorts the true colors to effectively cancel out the inaccuracies of your monitor's panel. Say your monitor constantly shows slightly too much green. Well, your graphics card will tone down any green values to compensate so what you see is accurate but it's a, a bit of a trick to make your monitor display more accurate colors. That also means that that calibration only works with the system that you've calibrated it with. So if you use another machine, you hook up, you know, move it to another desk and use it somewhere else, well, you're gonna need to recalibrate it again. And the other thing to mention is that calibrations can often drift over time. Monitors use liquid crystals, which have physical properties like anything else, and so they age, they get slower, they get a little bit stiffer, they don't move quite the same way, they rearrange themselves, so that calibration is to be redone. The general recommendation is about once a month for the, the professional work, um, so keep that in mind. Now I think for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna leave it there. Color science is an absolute infinite rabbit hole that we could go down well, infinitely. So for the sake of a, a more sort of beginner's guide to monitor colors, uh, I'll leave it there. If I've got anything wrong, you think, uh, you know, you want to add anything else or there's just, uh, you know, you have any questions, do feel free to leave that in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this one, there's plenty of other ones on the end cards, or you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. If you want to support me in these videos, then hit the uh, YouTube join button or join a sign up on Patreon, pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one or a load of other designs that I made myself. Or there's also a load of affiliate links that are in the description you can check out as well. That's kind of it. Like I said, if you have any questions or you want to add anything, please do in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.